Frag Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for our first retrospect episode on Frag Tag Radio. Um, we've been, you know, doing the regular episodes for a long time now, current game and news, current, you know, most recent releases, rumors, stuff like that. So we thought maybe we should switch it up and take a trip back down memory lane into the past. Nice. And uh, Matt, being a large, large fan of uh, retro gaming. Yeah. Uh, Guilty. All up in it. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll be coming to you every week uh, now. We have sort of like how we used to do back in the day. We're going to start doing episodes every week again rather than bi weekly. Uh, only difference being that one episode will be the current news and events, and then the next week we'll have something retro. So, we'll be moving back and forth between past and present. Um, and with that, we decided to do our first retrospect episode on none other than the Atari 2600, one of, uh, matter of fact's personal favorites. I do enjoy it. It is a good system. And relatively cheap still to pick up. How much? I don't know, 45 It depends on where you go. If you try to get the whole box complete, that might be around $500. But if you just find, I mean, I got this guy at a yard sale and like 15 games for 20 bucks. Yeah. And it's still, I mean, 37 years old, it still works like a champ. And that's all that matters. That is all that matters. So, um, so uh, moving in, I don't know if you wanted to just start off with the hardware or... Well, I mean, in 1977, when this was released in North America, there was maybe the Magnavox Odyssey. Right. That came out in 72. And for people that aren't familiar with that, it was really basic. It came with overlays that you would literally put on your TV screen. Right. And, you know, it was kind of like the Vectrex. I don't know. But so when this came out, this was a whole new opportunity for developers to port arcade games into the home. And granted, as with some of the games we've seen and you played, they're not always arcade perfect, but they had to work with what they had. Right. And I mean, I mean, just looking at this thing. It's just a big block. I mean, it's got the nice wood grain finish, which I'm a fan of. I like that. Right. But that's not, not, not actual wood. No, it's not. But it, it looks nice in my wall unit piece. So now, is that a sticker or is that paint? You know, that's a good question. I don't think it's paint. It's like a really high quality paneling. sticker. Well, it's, it lasts. It still looks nice. <laughs> compared to the revised edition they did, the Atari 2600 Junior, which is smaller, right. took away a lot of, you know, these excess black and white. Well, black and white was still on there, but these ugly knobs, I mean, let's face it, they're not the greatest looking thing. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, I mean, and with the Junior, it was black, all black, and just had a silver, like, plate across where you put, pop the cartridge in. And... Um, had I mean the only color on it was the Atari symbol with like a rainbow and that was it. And right. it was the cheaper, you know, revised edition. So but with this guy, when this came out, it came with a game, Combat. I'm sure anybody that's grown up has played combat with the tanks and the airplanes. We played it. Yeah. I think you dominated that. But it was two hundred dollars when it came out. So Which was a lot back then. Nineteen seventy seven, yeah. It was a lot. It's a gamble, I guess, really at the time. Parents seeing that. Yeah. I don't know if I should drop this. Little Johnny might not pay attention to it for about five minutes, but it caught on and it's actually, it, they stopped making this in 92. Right. So it's almost one of the longest running consoles, you know. Now, when was, which console, Atari console was after this one? After this in 82, I believe, was the 5200. Right. And that gets a lot of bad rap. For one, it's huge, like almost double this guy. Right. And there was like a huge flap in the back. You open up, and you can like st I guess store your games in there. Is what they were trying to go after. Was was the Jaguar their their last console? Yeah, the Jaguar. Yeah, that went out what like in '96. I think they stopped doing that. Right. And it was only two years. Yeah, '94 was released. There was a hell of a lot of buttons on that controller. Yeah, that's where they combined like just the regular control pad with the the touch pad. And you right. put overlays, which was funny. They were still doing that in '94. It was kind of a 
ancient concept. A little archaic. Yeah, but um, but that's a, you know it's another testament to how they tried to get as much as they could out of the system. Like I said, it came with combat, which had like I don't know, 26 different variations of the game, and then it came with two joysticks, which I mean, let's face it, it's pretty basic. It's just a stick with a red button, but that's all you needed back then. Right. And then when game developers started getting a little bit more... And uh, these joysticks, uh, they don't have a lot of give. No, they're that, pretty as firm. As you can see, you can, you can barely even move it. You feel like you're breaking it sometimes. Yeah. But they blasted, so... It feels like a toy, it looks like a toy, but it's sturdier than what it appears. Yeah, thankfully. And then, like, this little uh, video touchpad. So it's screen overlay when the game developers started to try to incorporate more into the games which is kind of hard what did you use that for star raiders it's the name of the game and basically shields on or off you just hit a button so there'd be a little symbol of course you know on the screen right you couldn't do everything with that joystick or the gal map which is like you know just the map of the world hyper warp oh and the, about to hit warp 9.5 <laughs> And four view, you know, so it just gave you different views. Half of them, like, this has uh, 12 buttons, right? Yeah. But, I mean, even then, only five are used. So it just all depends on the game, what other, you know, features the game so has. So it was like, let's just give it some extra buttons just in case we happen to come out with a sequel later. Yeah, well, not even, I don't even think they thought like that. They were just like, well, let's just throw some throw extra this buttons on the controller there. out here so that these people can buy this controller so they can turn on their map. You know what I mean? Right, so that button wasn't meant for just that, or that controller wasn't meant for just that game. Oh, no, 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 no. There were other games. You could take that little slide out and put a different slide on top. Yeah, yeah, depending on the game. I and mean, there wasn't a whole lot of games that utilized it, but the ones that did, they... I mean, Star Raiders was a fun game, but I never messed with it. I just played the game and not worry about my shields up or on or hyper warp. Right. I mean, it got to, you know, back then, it didn't really matter. It was just like kind of a gimmicky thing, I guess. That's how I always saw it. But uh, then also came the little paddles. Anybody that's played Super Breakout, the paddles? Looks like it's tennis ready. Oh, it is. And there's, they're very accurate. They're very nice, smooth, dialed in. Yeah, I actually like those a lot better than the joystick ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can hear that one's <laughs> seen better days, but it still works all right. But, yeah, so, I mean, so far... And they're actually still making games for this thing, you know, um, homebrew games. Yeah. Yeah, which is still, you know, cool. I haven't checked any out yet. I'd like to. But I imagine they're, you know. Probably even better than the older ones. Well, yeah. They can figure out, you know, utilize the system more with what they had to work with. But it's uh, 2600, 5200, 82. I believe it was in 87, Atari released the 7800. Right. Which so the was, NES came out, and that was 8-bit. What bit is this console exactly? Like 4-bit? Uh, I don't even think it's that. Like, I know the ROM, the cartridges are like in kilobytes, I believe. Right. Uh, I don't even know if that even registers, to be honest with you. I can't even remember. Because I never thought of it. The only time I worried about bit was when it was a Sega or Nintendo. Because that was right. the whole war. But Who uh, had the most bits? Yeah. But, I mean, oh no. To be honest, and nowadays it's polygons. Yeah, it is. How many you can process, shading, lighting, different kinds of lighting. Yeah, this is definitely harkens back to a more simpler time, as you found out when you play some games today. <laughs> yeah. Abruptly die. There's no game over screen. It just goes to a demo mode. Yeah, which is crazy. Like, you might be playing a game and then getting some kills or whatever, and then you die, and it's like the screen just freezes. And you like you almost think that like your system or your game is frozen or something, and that you need to hit the reset button. But in reality, it's just that's the console's way of telling you that it's game over. Yeah, hit the reset button right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was originally released as the VCS, the Video Computer System. Right. It eventually changed over to twenty six hundred, and uh, there was actually a Sears version, I believe, called Telegames. And it had Sears, you know, like Sears and Robot. No, just Sears. <laughs> but yeah, it was well, like no, actually no. stabbed in there. And uh, I would like to find that one because I, I just 
I want it. I want because it's just a Sears one. I kind of want to get that. It still plays all the same games and everything, but right, it's just a different stamp. And uh, the games for it itself are super cheap. I can get games for like eighty cents to like two dollars. I got you know, that game Berserk we were playing. Good game, two bucks. Now I'm sure there probably are some super rare games. Yeah, there are. A lot of them are. Um, oh uh, well, it's funny. A lot of them are the pornographic ones. Oh. Like Custer's Revenge, stuff like that. It was really risque and made a lot of, you know, politicians worry about what's going on even back then. Right. So those are really well, the rarest ones. I, I could know. only imagine that porn pornographic could only be so It's really so obscene so so obscene with those kind of graphics. Like Yeah, well it's yeah. like you've got like a brown block for a head and then like a peach block for a nude body. And then, like, well, I mean, well, it's they they had outlines of bodies. Right. It was really jaggedy. And you could see like nips. I mean, you could see this dude's. What? Yeah, straight out there. Oh. And the whole idea was to go across the screen, Custer's Revenge. Right. And I, I mean, knock I, over I, as many people people with your wang as you know, could. No, you had to go to the other side to get to uh, a girl, like oh, a Native right. American girl. Wait, and was she already like waiting? Bent she over, was already or? like naked, just chilling. Yeah. And then you proceeded to... Uh, Legs wide open in the V-shape. No, it wasn't that detailed. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a lot of other ones, though. I mean, some really just graphic ones. I was surprised they were even made back then, to be honest with you. But you got to understand, too, at the same time, people understood what it represented. And since this was still, you know, new concept to people, they were like, already, oh, that's that's all the detail they so needed. So that was like the Grand Theft Auto of the 70s. Pretty much. I guess you'd say that. Nowhere near as good, though. Right, well... Just like we were talking about before the show, I just finished playing Titanfall, and then <laughs> I come in the garage, and then we start talking about whatever we were talking about. about. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Titanfall won the conversation. <laughs> we're talking about our games. So, One of these. Um, how many games total do you have for the Atari? Do you know offhand? Oh, like 26, I believe. I'm slowly still building them up. And out of those 26... How many of them are, do you actually like really still enjoy to this day? Super Breakout. It's always a fun game. I just played that when I was little with my sister. Right. Super Breakout, Pac-Man. Even though people don't like Pac-Man on the system, right? I still like Pac it. Pac-Man was always best at the arcade. It was, yeah. You can't go around that. But that's uh, A lot of games were always best at the arcade. Yeah. There's a lot of like, fighting games too. Like I always liked playing Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was nothing like going down and playing it at the arcade. Yeah, way better. Nothing way better. like it. But we had to deal with what we had. And, you know, and then even once people started making arcade sticks for the home, mm -hmm. yeah. they, they were, like, so cheap. Yeah. I, that's like, why you mentioned that. They I had would one. break yeah. after, like, the first use and, like, yeah. nothing like the fight sticks today where they're like, made of out of like, actual, Like, you know, sturdy material, metal. Yeah, yeah. Like, real Japanese arcade parts yeah. and stuff like that. It was, like, all plastic. Yeah, that's how I, when I, Super Street Fighter, no, when Street Fighter 2 Turbo came out for Super Nintendo. Right. I ran out and got a fight stick for that bad boy. And not less than a month later, like two buttons went to work. Was that a, was that a Mad Cats one? Or? No, it was uh, ASC something. I can't remember. Like, I know Mad Cats been making them forever. And, yeah. and while the fight sticks they're making now are top, top notch. Yeah, really awesome. They are really good. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I thought of Mad Cats generally as a company that made cheap crap. Oh, yeah. Well, because back then I think they were doing just like really generic accessories like if you had a game boy advance yeah. you would see like, like a mad cat's light you could just whenever i went there. over to a friend's house and saw that they had like a mad cat's controller rather yeah. than rather than an official nintendo controller i'm like all right their family's having financial difficulties oh. <laughs> sorry about your bad luck because <laughs> there is no reason you would buy a mad cat's controller yeah. over a real controller back in the day yeah it was either that or you got stuck with it with a gift yeah. And they did not know what they just did. Where nowadays it's different. Yeah. Like Mad Cats and, and other uh, Razor yeah. is, is another yeah, yeah. Uh, third party company that makes controllers and things for consoles. Like those controllers almost actually rival the official ones now. Yeah. And they're just so much better quality. And I know yeah. Mad Cats in particular has gone from being one of the crappiest generic companies of my lifetime yeah. to one of the most quality driven companies yeah. that I can think of. I don't think of shoddy worksman you know, workmanship anymore. Yeah. I don't think of Mad Cats. I think of that arcade stick and I think about yeah, how the Yeah, Edition it is. too is really good, man. Yeah. Killer Instinct one. And uh, I got I mentioned Razor, uh, 
Razor's been making some really nice arcade sticks yeah, lately yeah, too. Yeah. So uh, I'm definitely hoping to check out the uh, the Atrox. Oh yeah, uh, Xbox One arcade yeah, stick, which is good. supposedly a lot uh, customizable, just like the the Mad Cat's one. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so, so we've gotten a little bit off track. Um, now, out of, out of these games you have here on the table, which one would you say is your favorite? My why? favorite? Well, unfortunately, I didn't bring all of them. But my favorite would probably have to be Defender. Defender. Yeah. I mean, it's just a sh side-scrolling ship, shoot them, you know, blocks, space uh, men or whatever. <laughs> and their you know, spaceships are trying to abduct people on the ground. You have to shoot the, you know, flying saucers. I mean, it's just a real easy not very deep game but it's fun because the screen's constantly scrolling you have a little map right. and you can go both ways and it, it has leeway you know in mario when you run and stop you kind of slide a little bit same thing with the ship you might turn around real quick and then it gives you a few seconds to go back but that would probably be my favorite one and then after that it would probably have to be literally combat yeah the, all the different options on i like game. that berserk game that was pretty cool yeah, uh, I picked that up because uh, I saw someone playing it online. I've always heard of the game, but I never played it. It was almost like some Men in Black type-ish. You know... Where you're just like a random dude, and you're going to, like, I guess a building, and... That and, was, and, yeah, and, a building. And, yeah, and, the maze. <laughs> and just shooting random aliens through each room. It was almost like uh, Men in Black mixed with Diablo. It felt like a Men in Black dungeon crawler. Dungeon crawler, or yeah, yeah. But, that, I mean, that's literally all it was. And I think it actually came there, out... there's no loot. Yeah, unfortunately. It's just all about going for that high score. It was, which you beat. Yeah. But uh, that's the thing about these games, though, is when these games, when you bought these games, they came in a nice box, the artwork was great, and... Uh, yeah, it was back in the day when instruction booklets actually had meaning. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these games you really have to use your imagination with. I mean, you would use, I mean, and that's where that box like art... Like the old ET game? Do you, uh, do you own ET? Uh, no, my sister has that one. I'm trying to get it off her, because I just want it, but... Yeah. <sighs> I don't even want to go anywhere near ET right now. Now, back in back in uh, in, the, in this time, uh, were there like RPGs, or there were, uh, were there, like text based, or I haven't seen any text based ones. There there might be some, but the ones I have like Adventure, uh, Haunted House, that was pretty much about the closest thing you got to. We talked about D and D for uh, the Intellivision. Yeah, which I, I wasn't quite that sure. Yeah, if it was for that, um, but. And that's the thing, though. It comes back to those instruction manuals. When you when you you played uh, or like Sword Quest, right? I mean, we put it in. I let him check it out. You just hated it. He hated it. But that's part of the thing. You needed that instruction manual to explain to you what these icons are, yeah. what this bar is, how like, you select. I'm like, something. what is this? Like our dude, the, the dude's outline looks pretty cool. But then, yeah. like the room we're in is like a red cross symbol with a block over top pretty of it. Pretty much, real just jagged. And then it's like I didn't see any enemies in the rooms. And then you walk into this one room, and there's like a laser just like coming down from the ceiling. Yes, yeah, see, I think that's for, a warp for like no reason. And you just like keep running into it. And then there's like a gap in the laser, and you're trying to like just make it walk through it. Yeah, see, I don't and know I'm what like that is. judging by the cover of this game, it looks like some Camelot type ish. And I'm yeah. just wondering why there's like a laser. I know. Well, I mean, that's when you saw rainbow <laughs> colors on this thing, that was great. Instead of just a bland orange or a ugly green. You know what I mean? Right. It's not green. <laughs> but it's, I mean, like I said, those instruction manuals, they would explain everything to you. Perfect. And they would literally walk you through the game. It was like a little strategy guide every time you bought the game. And I mean, some of these games, luckily I have a lot of instruction manuals for them. Still, yeah. Yeah, but I played, well, Adventure I have, but it's really vague. So I tried playing that, literally sat down for an hour and tried playing that. And I still have no idea what to do, where to go. No idea? No idea. But I own it. So I'm happy with and that. And you said that that's pretty much how it was for you with E.T. back in the day. Oh, E.T. I had no idea what to do. You hit his the button, his neck would extend, there was right. a guy in a trench coat chasing you. I don't know what that was about. No, that game got, as everyone knows, famously got a lot of hate. Yeah, yeah. Which presumably is the game that caused the video game crash. Yeah, that and apparently Pac-Man too. Um, well, so, well, I, I never played the E.T. E e game. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I just, just by reputation, I didn't want to play it. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um, so, so, what was horrible about it? There was, I mean, the graphics. I mean, E.T. kind of looked like E.T., only when you extended his neck. 
but the backgrounds were you couldn't tell what was in the you know if you were going up like literally up in the air right or if you were going in the background of like a, a um, screen right so sometimes there was like these blocks of i don't know if they were bushes or what but you didn't you had no idea what to do and like i said every now and then a guy in a trench coat would come chasing you and i guess you had to get away from him. i don't know how to do that i never have figured it out i'm sure my sister hasn't figured it out over the past so many years right, a guy in a trench coat all right so you say extending the neck you could extend his neck yeah and that would make him levitate up huh i don't remember that in the movie could you like but... make it could you make his finger glow no oh. <laughs> well another thing though et gets a bad rap true but the guy that programmed it was under a lot of pressure to get it out for the holiday season. So I think right. he said he had like four weeks or six weeks to Maybe make a less. game. Yeah, probably. And I just remember reading an article. I, I forgot thought, his name. I, I, I thought I remember reading somewhere that he had made it in like a few days. It might have been. I know it was real quick and yeah. he was really pressured. And everybody was excited, went out and got it. People brought it home, and then because people, people, people love the movie, yeah, it was a great movie. It's called classic. It is, <laughs> but when people played it, they like returned it, wanted their money back, and they overmade it. They thought it was going to be such a huge hit. They made so many copies that you know comes in that landfill right. story. They just mass produced. Which that documentary will be coming on Xbox later this year. Yeah, look out for it. And and that's the same thing with Pac Man. People were excited about Pac Man. Now, what was wrong with Pac Man Two? Well, Pac-Man, well, you know what the arcade looks How could like. it have been any shittier than Pac-Man 1? Oh, no, 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 no. This is the first Pac-Man. Oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, uh, uh. So we played that, and how was Pac-Man 2 worse? Well, see, I think Pac-Man, when it came on this, it was only one. And then when the 7800 or the 5200 came out, they had Pac-Man. That's when Pac-Man 2? I guess you call it. Yeah, it was like, I forgot what they called it. Was there a Miss Pac-Man on these two? I don't believe there was a Miss Pac-Man. I might be wrong. She was arcade exclusive? She needed a better home. <laughs> because, uh, like, I mean, it's just real rudimentary stuff. When you play Pac-Man on the Atari, it looks nothing like the arcade. You know, there's no cherries bouncing around or anything like that. Man, nothing like some cherries bouncing around. I mean, the ghosts all look the same. The sound effects are lackluster. But, I mean, at the time, that's the only thing people had. Right. So, but uh, Pac-Man, it's E.T., like we were talking about, apparently led to the video game crash of like 83 until 84. Right. And of course, that's when, you know, Nintendo came around, Famicom like in 83 in Japan and 85 over here. Donkey Kong single-handedly brought it all back. And true, yeah, Mario. But that's the thing, though. Before Sega and Nintendo released their own hardware, they were making software. Tax scan. Made by Sega. Yeah. They released the Mario Brothers arcade game, actually on all three of the Atari systems. And it was really cool, the uh, the console wars back in the day, because yeah. the companies would actually take shots at each other in their advertising. They would. Genesis and Nintendo were horrible at that. Nintendo or was it? Yeah. It's like it does when Nintendo don't. Yeah. Yeah. God, I remember that. <laughs> it was so funny because I remember watching like. 3DO commercials yeah. when they came out and it was like just dropping like the Saturn in like a, a you know a chest and just shutting it and it's like real power you know I'm like <laughs> it didn't last too long the thing was like $600 so but yeah that's and it, that's the funny thing though because when this was out it was new it was still people were still testing it it was beginning to take off so they didn't really have a whole lot of competition but they flooded the market with just really bad games Right. And that's what made a lot of people kind of get out of video games again because anybody could, you know, would make a game and they, they don't care. They just wanted to sell it. They knew it would sell. That was the good thing about Nintendo because the, the guy, if I, I can't even pronounce his name, but the owner of Nintendo, he mm -hmm. was a real stickler about quality. Yeah. And, and, uh, and he was the one that came up with the whole Nintendo seal of quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like lockout chips, I think. Something like that. I can't remember yeah. what exactly it was. But yeah, they had... And Nintendo issued developers so many of those chips, yeah. and that was it. So if they wanted more, they had to like try to negotiate. But Nintendo said, "No, you're having this many games. We want this many games. Take your time, do it right." And then what? Tegan, they found a way around that. And, yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, yeah. Nintendo, they kept a tight lease on on, on their shit, and oh, yeah. it paid off because they, they their their consoles became known for quality games. Yeah. 
and not just you know being overloaded with a bunch of crap that anybody could just throw on there. there yeah the games are literally all the same too atari has a lot of space games yeah black screens a white ship or a red ship with like a few different color enemies that was it well probably because they were so easy to make oh that's what yeah that's the only thing i could think of and i mean you know space invaders tech scan i have vanguard at the house which is another space shooter i mean the list goes on and on there's like probably 13 or 14 15 different games at least that have space something in it yeah but um but yeah the video game crash and then which was still fine they were still making these they kind of pulled back on the units they were making but they were still producing them they put out the 5200 and what really bombed that system was the, the controller it was a god-awful controller the, the joystick we think that's bad yeah it's it was just wonky and not good well then i remember uh reading an article with the guy who, who was the head of Atari saying that what, what really killed them was when they sold out. Oh, yeah. They basically they sold it to like corporate bigwigs, like no one that really cared. They were in it just to make money, which, yeah. you know, I understand, but they just didn't understand the full business. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I remember him saying if he could take it all back, he wouldn't have sold out. Oh, uh, it was it Nolan Busho? I yeah. think that's his name. He actually made Chuck E. Cheese, too. Yeah. Small fact. But... Yeah, well, good news is, though, he's back in the game, though, over at Atari, I believe, doing just uh, cell phone games now, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're concentrating on mobile now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and making something, revitalizing the few franchises that they have left. Because they sold off a lot of their lesser IPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah and just kept the core main, main ones. ones that, yeah. And, but that's the funny thing. I mean, even when, you know, when I first started playing this, revisiting it for, again for the first time after I picked it up, I was playing a lot of these games. I literally just felt like I had my cell phone in my hand. You know, they're just really simple, easy games. And you could easily just put on... It was funny because the last game I played that was good, that had the Atari logo on it, was Ghostbusters the video uh, yeah, game. Yeah, I'm glad you said something. Yeah, because that was a really good game. And then, well, they also did Chronicles of Riddick, too, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was another good game. Yeah, Assault on Dark Athena. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it's nice to see that good old Atari stamp, you know, with the little logo. But I just don't think, I mean, we're, you know, they're never going to be able to come back the way I would like to see them. I would like to see Sega come back. I still like to see Nintendo in there because that's just the way it is. And, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. of course, Sony and Xbox. But then if you had, like, Atari coming in. I don't think Sega's going to come back. That'd be nice. I really would like it. Like, maybe team up with Nintendo. Maybe make a handheld together or something. Or they don't realize it. It's a lot easier to make money and just release your your games, games on all consoles, consoles yeah. rather than try and spend so much time and money, you know, on, on promoting your own hardware. And yeah, well, they really bombed it with the Dreamcast, though. Unfortunately, it was a good system. It was ahead of its time. It was, and it was a great campaign. Now. I don't remember some of those commercials, but they were really good. Yeah, and actually. The low sales of that console actually led to some really quality games. Yeah, they did. Like, you know, Soul Calibur, Sonic yeah. Adventure 2. NFL 2K. Yeah. A lot of good games. But, unfortunately, or at least yeah. over here... I think the console, graphically, it was ahead of its time. Yeah, it had to, what, you could get yeah, a modem. first console modem. to be online. Yeah, you could also get a, a DSL, like, adapter, I believe, too, for it. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, uh, the modem was built into it. Yeah, yeah. And then you could take it off and switch yeah, it out. Yeah, pop it out, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the controllers had the, uh, the VMUs, VMUs yeah, which yeah. were awesome. That was, I mean, uh, in Sonic, a little, like, a, what were they called? And Shoes? It, uh, well, yeah, and it was cool because they had two slots. You could have the VMU and the Rumble, Rumble pack. pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really innovative system. Yeah. And and it, it was the first console that had had a really nice controller that I really enjoyed using. It felt good in your hands. It did. It was nice, curved. I like those triggers. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike the sixty four controller, which was like just I mean you didn't know which way to hold it. It was the time. oblong. Yeah. <laughs> You had to figure out the right control scheme for it, literally. Yeah, it depended on what game you were playing, how you were going to hold, hold it. it. Yeah, but uh, but we'll talk about the Dreamcast. We'll we'll have a retrospect on the Dreamcast in the yeah. future. But uh, yeah, but seventy eight hundred. Then we talked about well, you had the Lynx. Yeah. For a little while, which was great handheld. Yeah. I actually liked it better than Game Gear, which I had a Game Gear too, but uh, the Lynx was just a lot better. Higher quality. 
um, screen wise. Yeah, and it was, was and, and it was cool how you could hold it either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, the cartridges were, were a lot thinner than the Game Boy and Game Gear ones. Oh, okay. They were they were they were really thin, almost like just a little bit thicker than a piece of paper, I guess. Oh. And uh, you just stuck them in the back, and there was like a little lip that would kind of curve over the oh, back okay, gotcha, so that you yeah. could grab it with your finger and pull it out. Yeah, it's almost like a Turbo Graphics 16. You know those little cards. But uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh yeah, you talked game. about that game so much. Yeah, the game was awesome. I have to check this game uh, out. There was another game. It had like had it was had like a monkey in it. I forget the name of it, but oh. uh, it was like some jungle-ish with a monkey. I used to play that a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Pitfall was on there. Oh, and that was I think one of the better versions too. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was it was a good good handheld console. Yeah, it was really. The last good piece of hardware made by Atari. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thinking back on it now, because then the Jaguar did. came out. And yeah. The Jaguar CD came out. And, and the sad thing is, I think Jaguar could have been a success if the controllers weren't so shitty. The controllers were shitty, and I also remember reading an article. There the, was, the lineup of games was lackluster too. It was. Well, I don't think because they were saying, I, I think they were, what the plan was. They were originally making a 32-bit system. Yeah. But then they scratched that. Atari had made a lot of bad business decisions. They had yeah. numerous consoles. I love the works. Jaguar logo. Oh, I did too. Yeah. It was yeah, and I love the box and everything about it. But they they just they couldn't utilize it. They didn't know because there was all these mixed mash of parts. From what I understand, and trying to get like this processor. They didn't computer. have enough partners, and then that's nothing with the whole Nintendo. Nintendo was locking down a lot of developers as exclusive mm -hmm. to just Nintendo. Nintendo. Canoe, and so, so Capcom. pretty much, they couldn't make games yeah, for they were, Jaguar yeah. or whatever because they were licensed to Nintendo. They were dealing under with contract and whatnot. Leftover scraps of, and that's when they came out with like their own mascots. Uh, was it Zoom? What is that? Zooks or something like that? Should have made a cool game with a Jaguar. I should have. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I think that would have been disastrous. It could have been like Joe Cool the Camel, but he would have been a Jaguar. Just chilling. Yeah. Black shades on. Yeah. Black on black. Turtle Beaches. Turtle Beaches. <laughs> 94. Yeah. But, yeah, unfortunately, though, Atari now is just literally, when people think of Atari, they think of this. Or maybe a 7800. I remember going to their website, like, some months back, and I was, I was looking at it, and it's like, their website hadn't been updated in, like, hmm. two or three years. years. It's a ghost town. Like, <laughs> yeah. Then they can't even afford to have someone hand, just, hand on their website, website and keep, keep it up, up on it. Yeah, they were cutting pennies there, boys. They were cutting corners. Yeah, they were like, yeah, we gotta save every penny. But I don't know. Bottom line is, with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, if you're looking, I mean, a lot of people can't stand this stuff. They can't. They can't go back and play it. They just can't. I mean, yeah. I know a couple of people that would spit in my face before they would play this stuff. Yeah. J Ray, um, J Ray, yeah, Schmitty probably. Yeah, oh yeah. I've talked to him about him about that numerous times, and still, no, no, no. I'm like it's fun though. Just give it a shot. Let's play some battle toes. Yeah, let's try it out. And like I was saying, though, I mean, if you want something simple and fun to play, I mean, me and my son enjoy this game system a lot because of the games are simple, they're easy. A lot of them are to two player. Yeah, I mean boxing. We played boxing. We had. Fun did, with did, that. did they have a multi tap for this, or was that no, was that later? I think that I don't even know if they even had a multi tap. For was it was PS one the first one that had that? The multi tap. Mm, no, I think maybe Super Nintendo or Genesis might have had that first. I could be wrong. Though. I thought I think Genesis might have had a multi tap. I, think I don't remember that. having one for Super Nintendo, but I do think I remember seeing one. It was kind of like at an angle. Yeah. Actually, no. I think Nintendo original Nintendo had one. I think that is, yeah. So I don't know, they might have had it. I just can't imagine what game they would you would be playing. With like up to Couch co op was the ish back in the day. Yeah. And not this so much nowadays together. with online. No. Just but sit at home you know, and chill. Uh, I mean at least not for older people. But for yeah. kids it's still it's still a thing. It is. Which is cool. why I wish more games were four player split screen even today. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, sometimes you got friends over and y'all just want to get down and then four-player sports games where it's at. And especially if you got kids and sometimes they have a couple friends over, stay the night, you know, and you got th three play. or more kids. Yeah. And, you know, if it's two players or less, then you got to have the kids taking turns and it gets all complicated. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he went, like, uh, yeah. So I'm like, it's man, y'all just play a game that's four players. Yeah, <laughs> just relax. 
have fun. Find something everybody can play. But I don't know. The only thing with this, though, I mean, we had a heck of a hard time trying to figure out how to get it to work on the TV. Yeah. And we almost forgot to think about, you know, growing up, you're like, put the VCR on channel four, and you put the TV on four. I mean, you basically have to do the same thing with this. Yeah. Switch to antenna. Yeah, yeah, switch to antenna. Yeah, on cable. Yeah. And then we use it on the Vizio, so flat screen, so. But with this, you definitely have to play it on a CRT, or else it's going to be blurry, stretched out. A lot of these older systems look a lot better on those CRT TVs. Yeah. Might be able to get away with playing on a, uh, a DLP. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. think about that. Just yeah. somewhere in between. In between, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, for now, like I said, games anywhere from like less than a dollar to maybe five dollars if it's a really kind of rare or, yeah. or boxed. So, if you're a collector like Matt, you know, you might want to start going out and getting uh, it's as many consoles as you can for cheap. Yeah. Or if you're just a casual retro gamer, you might want to look into getting something like the Retron 5. Yeah, I mean... Where is, what, five consoles in one? One, or, yeah. And What's a, Nintendo, yeah. Super Nintendo, Genesis, Master Famicom, System. Master System, Mega Drive. Yeah, well, they play the Famicom, I think. I'm guessing. I don't know. I haven't... It plays both. So I think yeah. you just plug in the NES cartridge or the Famicom cartridge. Yeah, it's the same, yeah, same yeah, yeah. spot. So, yeah, but, I mean, that's already, like... And it's got ports for the original controller, so you yeah, can still get nice. the original yeah, controllers yeah, yeah. to plug into it. On the sides of and it. And it actually makes the games look a little bit better. Oh, yeah, it does kind of clean them up. And than they did. Put in higher re uh, resolution, right? You can yeah. run through the HDMI, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but unfortunately, I haven't seen anything out there like a, that would offer, like, an Atari cartridge slot. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, except for, uh, we were talking about this earlier, with uh, your uh, Intellivision, they released which is weird, but they release a separate module you can plug in that would play Atari 2600 games. Yeah. So So if you're interested in both, maybe just getting the tele a television and the adapter. Right? Yeah. Depending on how hard they are to find. Yeah. It, I mean... It might be kind of rare now. It might be. I think the voice modulator for it is. And that was kind of rough sounding. I don't know. Back in the now you remember uh, the camera for Game Boy? Oh, yeah. You could, like, print it out. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. The cartridge you plug into the top. Wow, yeah. That was crazy. I thought that was awesome back in the day. Like, my Game Boy, man. I'm taking pictures, printing it out, <laughs> decorating my fridge. What's up? But, and nowadays, like, it's so archaic. It's funny how, fi how fast that technology goes. Yeah. Only now we're starting to see it's kind of slowing down some, I guess, in a way. Yeah. But... What can you do? Atari yeah. 2600. There it is. Enjoy that wood fake grain. Enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good console, and there's big library for it. It's an old system. Yeah, oh, yeah, hundreds and, of games. And uh, like you were saying, there's even some homebrew people out there still making games for it on occasion. Yeah, and, and uh, if you are interested in collecting that, uh, you know, games or, you know, the system for, you know, I would definitely check out some of those homebrew games because they're pretty impressive looking. From what I've seen, I mean, granted, you have to keep in mind it's still an Atari 2600 game, but what they're able to kind of squeeze out of this little thing is pretty impressive. And, of course, cheap way would probably be to try and find that at a yard sale or something. But yeah. if they can't find it on a yard sale, um, I would say probably eBay, maybe. eBay, flea markets. Um, and mean, then as far as far as buying the games, um, you what was the website you go to? Uh, the website I normally go to is called DK Oldies. And... I really like the website. It's kind of like a mom and pop, kind of family owned business. But yeah. they, so far, I've ordered from them three times. They've been, it's been on time. It's, nothing's been damaged. And it's all been top quality stuff from them. It's all clean and tested. Plus, you have a 120 day uh, guarantee, which yeah. is nice. So, but yeah, I go there. And then um, that's really about the only place I shop online for my stuff. Right. I usually try to find them in flea markets and yard sales and stuff like that because people don't know i mean you go to like a retail store to buy you know like we have video game heaven here yeah and you know they'll bump it up a little oh, you know yeah. it's a retail store but if you go to a garage sale man it's like 10 cents take it enjoy it. yeah so i mean just look keep your eyes out or uh thrift stores they got them in thrift stores buy one get 13 free pretty much they're trying <laughs> to get rid of these things i mean they're just big black taking up space but all in all this system, I'd probably rate it at the time. I'd probably give it like four frags in seven to seven. 
No. And in 2014? I don't even think it really registers now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, for us especially, it's just a nostalgic trip right. back down, you know, memory lane. I don't play it every single day, but every now and then I get a hankering for like Pac-Man or just to hear those great, awesome. Usually when you're drinking. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know the sound effects are great. The blah, 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 and the bright flashes that like induce seizures. It's all yeah. there. Good old mono sound effects. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it. Like uh, the old MIDI files. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so um, there you have it with our first Retrospect episode, Atari 2600. Uh, like I said, next week we'll be back with, uh, with our normal current episode. episode. And then the week after that, we'll be back with our Retrospect episode number two. And uh, which console are we going to cover next? I NES. guess we could, yeah, we could start with the NES and just work our way on up. We'll start with the Nintendo family with that one. And yes, it is. So yep. look forward to that retrospect episode number two. And we'll catch y'all next week with the regular episode of Frag Tag Radio. Yep. Frag Tag Radio.